Hey everyone and welcome to this new review. Today we're looking at the Asus VivoBook S400, the larger and more powerful kin of the S200 I tested a while ago, which I actually enjoyed a lot. But is this one as good? Well, that you'll find out by the end of the video, so let's get going. Oh, but before we start, allow me to kindly remind you to share this clip on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and all the other social thingies if you'll find it useful and subscribe to our channel. Your support makes clips like this one possible. Alright, let's begin by taking a quick look at the VivoBook S400. Right out of the box, you'll notice that this S400 is a slim and fairly light laptop that should meet most of your requirements. When compared to the existing Ultrabooks, it's not very portable or compact. But next to a regular laptop it is, as it measures around 340 by 240 by 20 mm and weighs about 1.83 kilos, which is close to 4 pounds. Plus, the S400 does pack a 14-inch display, which most of you will find more appropriate for daily tasks than the smaller 13, 12 or 11-inch screens you can get on ultra-portable devices these days. The S400 does offer the same build quality we've seen on the S200 with an aluminum covered exterior. It feels sturdy as well and the metal on top of the lid does not bend that easily when pressed, but on the other hand it catches fingerprints like crazy. All in all, this VivoBook does look like a modern laptop. It's not as sleek as Ultrabooks, but for money you'll hardly be able to ask for more. The bottom of the laptop is covered in some soft plastic, but it feels alright and will provide a fair amount of grip when grabbing the laptop and carrying it around. The internals and the battery are encased, as down here you'll only find some cooling grills towards the back and the two speakers carved on the sides of the body, plus the four rubber feet. Having a look around the laptop, you'll notice a decent selection of ports. On the left, there's a Kensington lock, two USB 2.0 slots, the headphone and microphone jack and the card reader that can't actually fit a regular SD card. On the right, there's a USB 3.0 slot, the HDMI and VGA video output, the LAN adapter and the PSU. Of course, on a laptop so thin, there wasn't room for an optical unit, but you can use an external one if needed. Lifting the lid, you'll find a metallic interior. The palm rest is wide and the entire design is simple and classy, with a black keyboard in the middle that creates an appealing contrast with the light silver finishing of the body. The shell is paired by some status LEDs on the lower right edge and by the power button on the top right corner. The keyboard itself is fairly good, with proper sized and spaced keys. Typing on it is going to be an overall pleasant experience, especially once you get used to the layout that adds an extra row of keys on the right side of the keyboard. The keys do travel a bit too deep inside the frame for my liking, but that's not going to be a massive issue. The amount of flex, however, can. Plus, on this model, the entire body squeaked and cranked very annoyingly when using the keys on the middle right part of the keyboard, but that might be an issue associated only with this particular review unit as I haven't heard others complain about it. The trackpad is spacious and smooth, accurate most of the time and offers support for multi-touch gestures including those embedded with Windows 8. The cursor does tend to get jumpy from time to time though, which is pretty much a given with Asus laptops lately. And then there's the 14.1 inch display on this laptop with 1366 by 768 pixel resolution and like with all the other VivoBooks, the S400 comes with a touchscreen. It's a fairly good one that supports multiple touch points, reacts fast and reliable to commands and feels pretty sturdy. However, the panel Asus uses for the S400 is rather mediocre. During the night or while in a dim room, it's going to be alright. Otherwise, it shows its limits, as it's not very bright and offers both poor contrast and washed out colors. And you'll also have to deal with the limited viewing angles and the glossy coating on top of the screen, which is a given these days with multi-touch displays. I might sound a bit too harsh here, and I probably am, as the screen on the S400 is not a lot worse than what you can usually find on budget laptops. But having the S200 fresh in my mind, and considering that this particular laptop is not very cheap, I believe I'm right to conclude that Asus should have gotten a better panel on their 14-inch VivoBook. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and power on the device. The notebook boots fast, in around 15 seconds or so, and the unit we're testing here is one of the cheapest configurations, with an Intel Core i3-3217U processor, 6GB of RAM, hybrid storage and of course Windows 8. In stores, I found the S400 mostly paired with an Intel Core i5 processor, so expect that config to be slightly faster than the one tested here. 
Anyway, with everyday use, the laptop is going to be fairly snappy. Despite the lower power processor, the S400 coped well with my daily requirements like watching movies, listening to music, browsing, editing texts and photos, chatting with my friends. Of course, when dealing with more complex programs like video editors or when multitasking between many opened apps, the platform will choke, but the Core i5 or i7 options will be able to deal with most of these tasks as well. The laptop runs Windows 8 Pro. With a touch-friendly UI and a classic desktop mode, as you can get both Metro apps from the Windows stores on it and the legacy software from Windows 7 and the versions before that. On the other hand, Windows 8 is not really like the Windows you're already familiar with, as it's now heavily dependent on gestures and no longer has a start menu. I'm not very keen on the changes myself, but you'll get used to them in time. Also, you should know that Asus bundles a lot of bloatware on this laptop and getting rid of most of it will make it noticeably faster. Alright, in the next couple of seconds I'll show you some of the things you can do on this S400. Plus, if you're interested in benchmark results, you'll find those in the written review at ultrabookreview.com. I've added the link towards that in the description down below. Ok, so I'm a strong believer that a good portable computer needs to run quiet and cool, and luckily the S400 does not disappoint. Of course, with a regular hard drive and a fan spinning inside the body, the viewbook is not completely noise-free, but it runs overall fairly quiet even when playing movies or games. It doesn't get hot either, so you can comfortably use it on your lap. Besides this, there are some tiny details I should add. The wireless worked well on my test unit even when I was a bit further away from my router. But on the forums there are several users complaining about slow Wi-Fi and even consistent wireless drops. So be careful, this might be an issue with some units. Also, this laptop lacks Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. The 720p webcam on top of the screen works fine as long as there's proper light around, otherwise the images tend to get very grainy. The microphone picks up voices alright too. The sound system is definitely above average in this class of light computers, able to push punchy sound and decent audio quality even at high volume. As for the battery life, well, there's a 44 watt hour battery inside this laptop, the non-removable kind. Asus claims that it can go for up to 8 hours on a charge, but in practice I average between 3.5 and, and 6 hours of use with various everyday scenarios. If you're interested in the exact numbers, you'll find them in the written review at ultrabookreview.com. With all this on the table, let's also talk about the prices. The Asus VivoBook S400 sells for just under $700 right now, with a Core i5 processor and a 500GB hard drive plus 24GB SSD storage. In Europe, the same configuration starts at €700. Euros. In the US, the Core i3 config we tested here retails for around $550, but you'll only find it in some smaller shops. As for the Core i7 option, that's about $800 or €800 Euros based on where you're from. Ok, so basically the Asus VivoBook S400 is a decent everyday notebook, just thinner and lighter than the average laptop you're familiar with. It also comes with a touchscreen and runs Windows 8, and while it's not the snappiest flower in the garden, it's still able to cope well with the everyday tasks and light multimedia use. Are this enough to justify the price tag? I'd say yes, because the S400 is a fairly good laptop despite the rather poor screen and some of its other less obvious quirks. Of course, you can find other thin and light laptops on the market right now from Samsung, Acer, Dell, HP and many others, 
but the S400 has an edge above all this. It comes with a touchscreen and that might prove decisive for the potential buyers. And with that in mind, it's time to end this clip. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the written review for more in-depth details and also make sure to subscribe to our channel if you like the video. I'll catch you later, but until then, I'd like to know what do you think about having a touchscreen on a laptop like this one. Is this something you want or not? Are you willing to pay extra for it? Please leave your replies below and I'll see you soon. Cheers!